What's up, Internet? In my last video, I demoed how to set up a local development environment with Docker, Docker Compose, and Docker Sync. Today, I'm going to break things down a bit and talk about the why. Why use Docker in the first place? <laughs> Docker introduces some extra complexity when building an app. The reason why that is, is because if you're using Docker correctly, you're building your app as a collection of microservices instead of one huge monolithic application. Take for example, setting up a Drupal app. The traditional way of creating and deploying a Drupal application would require you to boot up a server or a virtual machine and then install a web server, a database server, a PHP engine, a caching backend, and then designate a path on the file system to hold the user uploaded content. This approach is fine, but it doesn't scale very well. What do you do if you need more server power and need to be on multiple servers to handle all the web requests that hit your infrastructure? The first thing you'd have to do is separate out all of the stateful aspects of your app from the stateless aspects. You'll need to pull the database server, caching server, and user uploaded files out of the monolith so that your application state is preserved across your horizontal infrastructure. For now, let's put all of these stateful services on one huge server. This allows us to scale out the web server to as many servers as we want. It's now stateless. As long as the web servers are connected to the same persistent store, the application should behave as if it were on one server. We've just started to build out a service-oriented architecture application by pulling those three services out of the monolithic Drupal app. SOA is the essence of microservices, which I'll touch on more later. The mechanism for spinning up identical web servers on demand requires you to have some sort of disk image. You can't scale architecture like this by just booting up another server and manually logging into it to configure it by hand. You need some system that can spin up identical servers, ideally automatically. However, it is possible just to configure one server by hand and then take a snapshot of that server to create a disk image, but that doesn't scale very well either. If someone on your team is making changes to infrastructure, it would be nice to see what changed through some sort of review system. This is where infrastructure as code becomes very important. Any changes made to infrastructure should be reflected in code so that it can be peer reviewed. This is called configuration management. Creating images from an existing server just isn't ideal. I just mentioned two concepts to scaling architecture, disk images and configuration management, both of which Docker is awesome at. Now you can accomplish what I've just mentioned without Docker using virtual machines, and we used to do this with configuration management using Chef and creating disk images with Packer. But Docker takes this paradigm one step further. With Docker, you aren't running these services on full-blown servers and virtual machines. Docker uses containerization, which is basically the same thing as VMs, except that containers can share the same kernel as other containers on the machine. Containers are smaller than full-blown servers and virtual machines. Another benefit is that you can easily move these containers from machine to machine without any fuss. Everything necessary to run the service in the container is self-contained within the container. The container will run on any host you ship it to. Just like a shipping container, your Docker containers are portable and will run exactly the same way on every Docker host. Because the footprint with containers is so small, service-oriented architecture evolved into microservices. Martin Fowler says this about microservices. The term microservice architecture has sprung up over the last few years to describe a particular way of designing software applications as suites of independently deployable services. Independently deployable services. In a nutshell, that's what Docker does for us. Let's take the Drupal app I mentioned earlier and break it up into independently deployable services. Let's separate the database, file system, and caching backend into separate services. Let's also separate the web server from the PHP engine. We now have five separate services that make up this one app. A web server, a PHP engine, a database server, a file server, and a caching backend. We can now update any of these services without touching the others. If I need to update PHP, 
I don't run the risk of taking the web server offline since I'm not touching the web server. I just launch new PHP containers with the updated PHP and deploy that. Now all of my PHP requests will be handled by the new service with a little bit of help from service discovery. This is the essence of Docker, independently deployable services. That's all I have for you today. I'll cover Docker Compose and Docker Sync in depth in my next video. Docker Compose is a tool for wiring up all of these microservices and Docker Sync is strictly for development environments. More on that next time. And stay tuned for the rest of the series on building a 12-factor Drupal app. Once I have these core concepts covered and posted to our channel, I'll resume that series. If you like this video, make sure to give us a thumbs up and if you're not already subscribed, hit the subscribe button below. See you next time.